Hello, 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 hello again. It's the international break. As always, it gets very boring football. Um, although saying that England playing tomorrow against Brazil, so that should be all right. It should be entertaining. Um, talking points. I'm Sam Spurs for life. Let's get into this. Welcome to Paxton Road TV, PR TV Spurs. I'm Sam Spurs for Life, and this is Talking Points, episode number 121. I do believe I haven't even got the actual. Yeah, I should do. There we go. Title of the show 121. Is this still what's missing at Spurs? I think it's a good time for us to have a bit of a chat since it's the international break, as I've mentioned already. And to help me do that, as always, I have my esteemed guests. Uh, who are they? <laughs> Not really joking. Sid Spurs and Sean Hell. Welcome to the show. How are we doing? Yeah, all oh, good. No, my microphone. Sorry, go on, carry on. Sorry, I'm just going to get my microphone in the right position. I'm just still setting up. Yeah, all good. All good. It's no game now for a week it's what to do what to do england watch england or not to watch england i probably won't be watching england even though they're playing brazil but hey ho hey ho they've messed up the shirt they're blaming nike for it you know what it's a funny old fa aren't they absolutely fa sean how are you um i'm okay yeah i'm not a big fan of international breaks generally I know, um, other than the big tournaments, I don't really watch international football. Um, and, you know, I just am desperate for a bit of hand sport as soon as possible, particularly to sort of like expunge the memory of what happened at Craven Cottage the other week. But, um, yeah, I mean, there are other things to do. I'll be uh, no doubt flexing my Cine World car this weekend This uh, to, to, uh, Pay for my um, monthly dues, as it were. And how are you feeling, anyway? I know you um, too well, but hopefully you are going to be nice and happy being on the stream and help with your recovery, Mr. Hell. That's what I'm hoping. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, no worries with that. Right. So, title of the show, uh, as we've seen. Um, I know you guys are just kind of. What's he talking about? What's this geezer on this time? What's he on about? What's he talking about? Well. Funny enough, after what you just said, Sean, kind of that segue from the, the Fulham game, it just got me thinking, I said, I've been having a few thoughts, chatting with people, as you do, you know what I mean? What, what's, what's not to say anything's gone wrong, but the kind of performance that we put in, in a game where I thought it was a, um, it should have been a, a game we should have won, uh, based off the fact of that Aston Villa game. And as I said, there was things in that Aston Villa game, which were very, very positive. But again, I do some deep thinking. I always do, you know, as, as you go along with Spurs and you kind of look at things and you look at the pros, the cons, what's what's good, where are we going, where's this look to, short term, medium term, long term goals, blah, blah, blah. One thing I will say about Tottenham is we are definitely on an upward trajectory. I can't say that very easily, but I will say it again, an upward trajectory. The football's better, obviously, since last year. Um, I think the feel-good factor around the whole stadium uh, the whole club is obviously a lot better. Um, in my opinion, Daniel Levy's probably got the best manager to do what needs to be done at this moment in time. But not everything is perfect. Um, the first 10 games of the season, we flew out the blocks. Very different style of play, although some would say that it's been kind of implemented before in terms of Pep doing the, in, in, um, the, full, the wing backs, sorry, full backs inside, etc. But, you know, we, we play it consistently. But as with everything, once you've done that and people have seen it, as is everything in the Premier League, things kind of get, OK, we've worked out. Now, I still think our football is brilliant, um, but we lack quality in all areas of the pitch. But it, it appears that we will be playing the, the same way 
at all times. Now you just have to go back to Celtic to look at what happened in the Champions League with regards to and brilliant. He had some brilliant, brilliant games, but ultimately the results weren't there. My my question to, in in terms of starting all this off is, do you think this style of football, if we were to get into the Champions League for next season, bearing in mind we don't quite have all the quality, and it has been talked about that we will need some transfer windows to get all this quality in. Do you think it would be a good thing for us to get into that Champions League and play the same way that we play and expect us to get positive results? Because I just don't think that we, we... If we get into the deeper stages of the knockout season, I look at some of the teams that have been playing in there and they're very, very cute. The heritage thing, you know, how, how is this going to work out? And then we can go on and talk about other things, which I think in, in terms of the long-term planning for Spurs might need to be looked at. Aggression being one of them, you know, the players that we've currently got rid of, the players that we're getting in, are they too young? Do we need some more you know, experience, etc. although we're getting them, bringing the squad down. But, you know, in the first instance, how do you think we'd fare if we got into the Champions League next season? I'll ask you firstly, Sean. What's your thoughts? Based on the current squad, I think, I, I, like you, I share concerns about um, what would happen to us if we were into going to the Champions League. And I think I want to see, I want to talk about this through the prism of Inter Milan. Now, Inter Milan are having a season and a half in Serie A. I think they've won 24 of their 29 games. They're absolutely running away with Serie A. Um, and no, no one has found an answer for them. But look what happened to them in the Champions League just now. They, they came up against Atletico Madrid. Two draws, but knocked out on penalties. And that's how cruel football can be sometimes you know it's not necessarily how you know they, they've got a, they've got a, a, a really interesting setup um similar not the same as as the, as the one that um, Posta Coglu runs for us but um you know it's it's I think there are Oh, there's still an overhaul to be done, and even Anders admitted that. You know, and, and, you know, he's never he's never shied away from that. <coughs> he's even admitted that performances and results like Fulham will happen while he tries to address that. Uh, you know, the difference, you know, the deficiencies in our squad. So, I'm um, I'm um, as 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 I as I get away from that match last week, I'm, I'm becoming less sort of. Um, angry about it less or less annoyed about it and just thinking well you know we, we'll, we'll take we take our licks and we'll move on but i think if we were if, we, if the current squad was to go into the champions league i think we would have a very very tough time of it yeah sid yeah i think this current squad although on paper it looks quite decent i think champions league wise i think I think I agree with Sean. We're not. We're not. I don't think we're ready for Champions League. Um, Foster Coglu's way of playing as well. It's not going to change. I mean, his record for Celtic was played seventeen, won six, drawn two, and lost nine. But he was beaten like by teams like Athens, Ferran Varas, Malmo, Cluj, Marimor, and Border Glimt. So his style of play ain't going to change. In the Prem, in the FA Cup, Carabao Cup, in the Champions League, Europa League, whatever you want to call it, he's going to carry on playing the way he's playing. Now, like Sean said, the example he used with uh, Milan, you've got to adapt, especially in Europe, because if you try and play your way of football in Europe, you're going to come unstuck, because European football is a complete different kettle of fish. And you need managers as well as players that can adapt. We know he doesn't adapt. We know he's got his one way. And that's the only way he plays. No plan B. So, for me, I don't want us to go into the Champions League and just be, you know, back in the days where Arsenal were just going into the Champions League just to make up the numbers. I don't want to be a team going into Champions League making up numbers so that they can accumulate money and, and go as far as they can, knowing they're not going to win it. So let's go as far as we can and then get knocked out and say, oh, well, we had a good run. I'm going to go back to what we said a couple of days ago. I think it was, I can't remember which one it was, but if we're not going to, if we're not going to be good enough to win the Prem 
right? And you haven't got how many teams have you got in there potentially that can win it? Liverpool, City, Arsenal. You could, I mean, Man United, Chelsea, you could put in there, but not at this precise moment. You've got three teams potentially, right? That are at the top of the summit and they're going to be hard to break down. You go into the Champions League, you got Madrid. Barcelona, Bayern Munich, you've got loads and loads of teams. And you're thinking we're going to go into that when we don't even take the cup seriously. I think with this squad, I think he, he's got, I mean, it is a plan, isn't it? And it's a project. So I think as long as he gets the players that he wants in the summer, maybe give it a crack, but I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. I just hope they don't go into these European competitions to make up the numbers and fill Daniel leave his pockets. Mm. <coughs> Sorry, interesting views from both of you. I, I'm. It's definitely. I, I'm concerned about the, not the lack of a plan B because that that's probably wrong. Because I, I think Sean said this before. The, the big teams don't necessarily have a, a plan B per se, but they do have tactical tweaks and adjustments to be able to to get results. As I see that my my mention of the game. The league game, um, Manchester United uh, and Manchester City, when City played John Stones, basically is almost like a number 10 coming from midfield. That, that's a tactical tweak. Didn't sacrifice the principles in terms of an attacking um, possession-based team, but what it did do was it counteracted Manchester United's way of playing in terms of a, a man-marking press. So if you're a man-marking press, what your idea is to quite simply take all your players out of position. And if you can maintain good quality possession, you're in control of the game. That system doesn't work if the other team has the ball more so. So when we played Wolves and they employed a very similar tactics, they were able to get the ball off us in more dangerous areas and were able to transition. That's why I keep saying about the way that we play. If you work it out, you can A, set up a, a system to, to combat that, a, a, a defensive lineup to kind of, right, we know what we're going to do in the transition. And if you effectively get it right, as we've seen teams do, you can get opportunities us. Now, not to say that we're going to lose every game and not to say every team's going to score loads of goals against us, but there was a, a, a blueprint in that. And because of that blueprint, you rely on quality. And this is my point going back to what I was saying at the very beginning. This summer transfer window is going to be very, very interesting and beyond because we need to have quality in all positions and also in them backup positions to allow us to play the way we do to be successful with it. I remember when we had that review show when we talked about, and when I had to go off a little bit earlier and you guys said you wanted to just carry on talking about what Poster Cogby said at the end of the post-match interview. And I kind of heard that. It was along the lines of, and you guys can, can, can tell me if I'm right or wrong, but it was along the lines of he'd rather, rather finish fifth knowing his team's better equipped to go into the, the next season than finish fourth, supposedly with a bit of success, and not think he's ready. When I listened to that, it kind of made sense, and it didn't make sense, if that, if that makes sense. <laughs> because if you, obviously, if you get to top four, you've been better than the teams that have been below you to get into that top four, or they've just not performed, which is kind of the case now. But if you don't get into that top four, and then you do get fifth, how... How is your team better? Because teams have obviously gone above you to get into that top four. So then you go into the next season having to then get better. And then you're hoping that your transfer window is successful. So regardless of where you finish, it's always about your transfer window, how successful that's going to be. And as we've known, we've talked about for the last X amount of times doing this, this, this podcast, four years and so, there has been, let's say, some doubts about whether our chairman and, and Enoch are providing us with the funds to be able to do what we're going to do. We've seen the Conte, we've seen the explosion, we've seen what happened with Jose, blah, blah, blah. we've seen what happened with Nuna, et cetera, et cetera. Even with Poch at the end of his reign, he knew that he needed to be a, to be a, have a rebuild. And we're in that rebuild now. But because of how, and this is, this is my, because of how Poster Cogley works and how he plays, the Chelsea game told me everything I need to know this season about how we're going to play. And he doesn't seem to talk, to, talk about no, he doesn't not necessarily not talk about winning trophies. He does. But what he says is the, the more important thing is for him is the improvement of the team, the way they played, everything around that. Everything around that has to be improved. Now, improvements, we can all look at that 
um, subjectively and think to ourselves, what does that mean? Does that mean more points from last season? That means more goals from last season? That means a higher position than last season? That just means a better feel-good factor around last season? I, you know, it's, you can really go on and on and on. I'm assuming that means you're progressing because you're actually improving on your points tally. You're improving on what you win. You're improving on the number of games you win, blah, 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 blah. So hand in hand, those things then go synonymous with winning something. If you improve and you get more points, you had 75 points the season before and you get 80 points that season, that's an improvement. But if two teams above you get 100 points or 95 points, and instead of coming and the other team gets another 82 points and you come fifth as opposed to six or whatever it is, then yes, you've improved. But have you really improved in terms of being able to win something? This is what I'm getting, I, I kind of, and I guess this is where the, the building process of Arsenal being eighth, eighth, eighth has, has, has kind of come to. We're going to have to have patience and time. Do you think we're going to give this manager the time that's required? Because I don't think we can get it right just through the summer transfer window. And let's say we were in the Champions League I have the same fears as both of you. What needs to be done? What is actually missing that we could get in the summer? And I'm not just talking about players. I'm just talking about in general. See? Uh, what, the players you mean? Well, like I said, because of the title of the show, like, like I said, what is still missing? I, I didn't just want to touch on that aspect. I wanted to look at certain individual players, but we'll come back to that at, at, at another juncture. Yeah, I think... In terms of players, you, you've got to look at City's model now, aren't you? You need strength in depth. You need players that are adaptable. You give John uh, Stones, as I should say, Josh Stones. Then you gave Stones as a prime example. Yeah, they've got they've got Guardiola playing as a left back or is he a right back? You know, so Ake's coming in at centre back. So I think we need. A group of players, not every one of them, but certain players from the back in the middle that can play various positions. And I think what's very important now under Posta Coglu, with which which we've realised, is stamina and fitness. They've got to be go up. They've got to be able to run up and down for ninety minutes, ninety five minutes, and just give hundred percent. Now, them kind of players are going to be very, very, very hard to find in the summer because every other team will be looking at the same kind of things. So the question is, does he go and buy a £100 million player, which what he's going to end up looking for potentially could be that, or is he going to go and do what he said and get two £50 million players, which might be just be able to do the players one player's job that was 100 or is he going to get lucky with our scouting system and get the two fifty million pound players that he wants that can do the job that he wants to do? Because there's no doubt there are there are positions in that squad that need changing, not changing, but needs a rotation or needs somebody as good as the person who's holding that place. And you and I know, and yourself, Sean, we know that there's certain positions where. If that player gets injured, we're absolutely screwed. So, summer's going to be very, very interesting for me. Very interesting in, in terms of the project and the build. And, obviously, ambitions of Postacoglu versus Daniel Levy. Mm. What's your thoughts, Sean, in terms of the short-term, what's missing kind of aspect of it? Because, as I said, I'm, I'm not looking at this as being, we have to get everything right in the summer. My concerns are because of because of what's the way I've seen us play now, and because I, I know how football works. The Premier League's the toughest league in the world. Nobody can argue against that. You could go to Spain. You could. That's why Harry Kane's gone to Germany because he thinks he can just turn up and win a, a league. It doesn't work like that. It might not work for him this season. But anyway, that's another story. So Champions League is even higher echelon than that in terms of the, the differences in the way teams play. And I think you have to have a different way of playing. I just think you do. So in the short term, what do you think is missing from our club, our, our our team that we need to address in the summer that will put us on this road to, I guess, success? Um, it, yeah, what's missing? What's, I mean, I think we can look at we can look at current members of our first team squad and say, can we improve on them? 
without a doubt, it's, you know, we, we can we can look at individuals and say that we can we improve on them. I think, um, I mean, it's just something that I've been sort of ruminating on during the week is that we are not in that position where we can spend one hundred million pounds on a player like a Declan Rice, for example, and expect that to carry us over the you know winning a trophy threshold. So I can understand why Anne might say, if I can get two fifty million pound players who will improve the current squad to compete domestically, which let's let's be honest, before we you know, I think we need to compete domestically. We haven't been competing domestically. We have we're not winning the Carabao Cups. We're not winning FA Cups. We're not having coming up runners up in the in the in the in the in the, the, the league. And as as good a distraction as the Champions League is, mm -hmm. I remember. I mean, it's not the best example to quote, but I remember uh, Noel Gallagher, a big City fan, and he said that when they were winning domestic trophies, he, he, he wasn't really worried about the Ch Champions League. He wanted to be able to lord it over the rivals that you play week in and week out. And do you know what I think that, but there is an element, as a fan, I think there's an element of truth to that. I, I would be quite happy hoovering up cups and, um, and, and, and you know, God forbid, we, we, you know, we, we win, the, win the Premier League. But we've we've got a way to go yet, and you know I'd rather we focused on domestic stuff than European because I I can't think of a team that goes and wins the Champions League and nothing else. You know, I, 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 give me I can't think of a recent example. You know, usually the team that wins the Champions League are dominating in their domestic league as well. So I would rather that we would we we do that. And I think we're at the moment where. We need more players, and I, I would rather spend two lots of fifty million pounds and improve the, 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 the quality of what we have at the moment. Until we get to a point where it might be that we, you know, all we need is that one hundred million. We might need that striker, you know, the, the Alaro Martino or whatever it is, to to complete the uh, to complete the squad. But at the moment, I think. Um, I'm I'm confident. I share the confidence of Ange that he's got an idea in his head of what will be successful in the Premier League, and how, and that he's building towards that. The one stumbling block, of course, is the is the is the history of our ownership, who um, have foisted players on managers that they didn't want. Or spent money what unwisely, um, and you know the more you, the more you read into it, it seems like Pochettino didn't want the players or didn't want some of the players that were were given to him in that last transfer window. You know the Endombele window. Um, so it's just this is this is the big element of doubt, isn't it? It's it, it's it's the ownership whether they whether they really devolve responsibility to Scott Mann and the rest of the team. And, I, and, I, and I've been heartened by the interviews that they've given in Australia as promotion for the, for the game in Australia at the end of the season this week, that they seem to be working, they seem to be singing from the same hymn sheet. So it is, it is better players um, that we need, we need to get, but I, I would like to see us focus domestically. Is that an yeah. answer? That is bloody brilliant. <laughs> bloody brilliant because it gets so much talking points in there. I, I, I go along with that. I've, sort of, I've always maintained that, and I think Sid's probably the same as well. We should be winning a trophy. Now, the easiest, <laughs> easier of the trophies to win, if you want to go in some reverse order, is definitely the Carabao Cup. It 100% has to be the easiest of the trophies to win. It's the least amount of games. You don't how, even come into it. Go on. Sorry, how is that easier than the FA Cup? It's the same. No, no, in my opinion, because it's less rounds. So you've got less jeopardy. There's less There's less rounds in there. So okay. it must be easier to win. And as well as that, it's almost seeded in a way that you can get the Premier League teams to avoid 
certain teams themselves, in fact, and then get to... Not play. us. Not us. <laughs> Apart from us. Not us. <laughs> we got a Premier League team away from home, a London rival in our first round in the Carabao Cup. We got a Premier League at home, Burnley, who were rugged, you know, dogged, and, you know, we struggled to get by, but we got by. And then your reward for that, you get to play the Holders. You get I, to play the holders. The who came on a mission. The champ, yeah, the, the, the triple winners who yeah. were on a mission to at least score at White Hart Lane. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I mean it know, is we, a bit of luck of the draw. I, 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 we, we need we need the luck of the draw. I, I, I really I, felt I, for Ange, you know. To I'm going to I'm going to hold my hands up. We we do need luck of the draw. But what I meant by the seeding aspect of it, we don't play in round one or is it round two? I mean, when do you come into it? Round three. Just look at Chelsea. I know. I mean, they're in the semi-final. Who the hell have they had to beat? I know. And this is what I'm saying about the luck of the draw. And because of that, when you get that luck of the draw, you get them elements. Chelsea could actually win a trophy. Now, if you said to me, I knew Chelsea were fucking going to be absolutely struggling because of the fact that what they tried to do this season. But if you said to me, and this goes for Manchester United as well, if you say to me, those two teams have a good chance to win a domestic silverware based on the fact that you can't even identify what Manchester United do as a team at the moment, how they play. Chelsea more so, but even then, I think Pochettino loses his mind and he, he tries to do things, he's trying to be too clever. At least with us, we've got an identity, we've got a clear way of playing. But, but does that clear way of playing necessarily translate to winning a domestic trophy? Not necessarily, and I'll give my reasoning for that. Manchester United and Chelsea have had to do things in their games to get through, regardless. Whether that's getting to penalties, whether it's sponge, I don't care. They've had to, they haven't played exactly the same way. Let's look at that Manchester United, Manchester City game, for example. I saw all kinds of weird and wonderful things from Manchester United, but they won. I, I still maintain the fact that in all of this time, even going back to the Pochettino, since 2008, we should have won a domestic trophy of some kind and I keep saying the easiest one of that would be the Carabao Cup because of all those things we've talked about but looking at the way and post Coglu plays and this isn't a, a detriment to that but it's 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 a concern for me is that okay we're going to play this way and the best team on the day is going to win and the, the, the team with the most quality or whatever. We know football doesn't work like that, but you have to have that sort of mindset to be able to go into these games. You don't go into these games thinking, I'm going to lose. You go into this game thinking, my way is the best way. It's going to win. It's going to do that. But what do you think the other manager's doing? Right. If you're a manager that knows you haven't got X amount of quality or X amount of tactic ability, you do something differently. What we saw with Fulham was a prime example of that. They watch games against Wolves. They watch games against, you know, likes of even Sheffield United, Chelsea. All the teams that we've played, we have had a good attacking threat. And I can see how you can attack us and win. So in cup competitions, the ultimate aim is to get through to the next round. It's no draws. You know, you can get a draw in a Premier League game and your point amasses and adds up. And by the end of the 38 games, you can be a certain place. But in a cup competition, it's win or lose. Whether that's on the day, whether that's replays, whether that's penalties, it's win or lose. That win or lose aspect of it for me is where I think you do need to have some sort of adaptability in the way that you play. And I don't think we've got enough quality to be able to play that way until we get that quality. I don't think our game of just being able to do what we want is going to get success in that sense. Now, over a period of time, and this is the reason why I'm going to come back to both of you is, do you think we're going to give our manager that sort of time that we gave Arteta? Because we're on the same sort of path as Arsenal. Let nobody fool anybody differently. We might ridicule and joke about Arsenal, but they had a clear right. It doesn't matter what he does, unless he actually gets himself into relegation. And even when they were in relegation, do you remember when that season when they started off and they were terrible and they was in the bottom three and everybody was like, oh my God, Arsenal could get relegated. They know they're going to get relegated, but they were under pressure. They stuck with it. They stuck with it. We have to do exactly the same because we've seen the blueprint. Are we going to be patient with this manager, do you think, to be able to, let's say, get ridiculed in the Champions League, let's say we make the Champions League last next season, and also keep playing the way we're playing, even though we haven't got all the quality players, what, what is acceptance for you guys for next season, I guess? Now, you know, I'll ask that question in general to the, to the, 
the people watching. What, what What's acceptable for next season for us? I think next season, it's we're all saying it's a project, right? We're all saying he's coming, he's, he's, his way of football, he's turning things around at the club. The noise coming out from the dressing room, they're loving the way he communicates with them, they're loving the training sessions. There's a unity, there's a family environment now within all the players. Romero said he was going to leave at the end of the season if Conte had continued because he had had enough. And now he's waxing lyrical about Pasta Coglu. Everybody is. So that's an upwards and onwards, which is very good. <clears throat> Next season, obviously, we all know how Pasta Coglu wants to play. We all know. And like you said at the beginning, when it's working, when it's in full flow, it's a great watch. When it's not working, Fulham game, for example, then... It's frustrating and everyone's like, oh, we're back to Spurs again. Oh, it's a good old Spursy. Oh, you turn up one week against Villa and then you don't turn up again the week after, which I'm still miffed about how you can play that well one game and then not play it seven days later. That anywhere near that standard is completely like a different team turn out. So it's progress, isn't it? And it then depends, obviously. For me, the most important thing is in the summer now, he's got rid of a lot of players. The rest of them, the Ndombele's, Tangangas, obviously Joe Roden's doing really well at uh, Leeds. He'll probably end up going there with a fee. Get everybody that doesn't need to be there or he doesn't want at all costs. You've got to get rid. I'm including Sessignon in there as well. And this all shit, shit going on with Solomon. Send him back, I would say, as well. Right? So... There's so much going on. If Posta Coglu can get all that out the window and then get in, I'm not saying get in five players, as long as he can get in a few players in to add to the squad in the departments that he needs, then it's a way forward. And and you don't know. We can give a run, you can give him a run again for the Prem because we did first 10 games, injury barring, it sort of halted us big time. And now we've got the players back and some of them are struggling because we can tell they're not 100%. If they stay fully fit, like Arsenal players have done all season, then we could give them a good run. But aside the Premier League, we've got to win a cup next season for me. We've got to. We say we season season out with the managers that we keep, keep getting in. We've under po uh, Poch, Mourinho, uh, Conte. All proven managers, obviously, Conte and Mourinho. We didn't win anything. Got to the final, sacked the manager. For me now, we've got to start taking these cups seriously. Yes, the draw. Sometimes we need the luck of the draw. But at the end of the day, look at Man United. They got man, uh, they, they played Liverpool. They didn't say, oh, shit, we've got Liverpool. They went out, they gave them a game and they beat them. Simple. So no matter who you draw, whether you draw Acklington Stanley, or whether you draw Manchester City, you've got to play to win the game. Now, that City game, I don't know about you, Sean, but we were both at the game. It never looked like we were going to score in that game, did it? You know, and you're at home. So, you've got to give it all, no matter who you play. So, for me, a cup has to be a must next season. Champions League, we're in it. I think it's going to be more of a hindrance, to be fair. That's what Drew's not saying here. Champions League next season, if we achieve it, will be a distraction. Prefer Europa and bleed in some of the youth. Yeah, I, I think if we get into the Champions League, it's going to be a hindrance. Yes, we might have a good couple of decent teams coming to Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Yes, you might. some of the fans might have a good away day. But realistically, are we, are we going to get anywhere near winning it? No. Is it going to be a hindrance or a distraction? 100%. 100%. Sean, I, yeah, I mean, I think if we if we want to have a warning about the Champions League, we should look at um, Manchester United and Newcastle this year. Yeah, um, Newcastle in in many aspects were very very unlucky. Um, you know, they were like thirty seconds away from qualifying from a, a group of death, a really difficult group. But if we were to get a group of deaths. Even with an improved squad, which I, I expect the squad to be improved during the summer, 
I think it would be a, it would be a, 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 a it could be a detrimental uh, problem. One, we won't get to blood our locally produced youth. We've got an issue coming up with homegrowns. Um, we've got um, although we are actually believe it or not, Papasar becomes a, a home grown player next season because of the vagaries that he's been with us for since he was 18. So um, it, there's all sorts of machinations going on there. I, I, I was listening to a podcast with, uh, on The Athletic about that, that uh, talking about Tottenham. Um, so squad building is going to be difficult. I think um, also the young players are going to find obstructions coming in. So it's about getting, getting, getting them decent loans. Now, we're going to get a fee for Roden. It might not necessarily be Leeds United because other clubs will be alerted to the fact that he's a very he's a competent uh, championship stroke lower Premier League defender. You know, so we, we may, you may actually get a team from the bottom third of the Premier League this year who will come in for Roden. So we will get a fee for him. Um, but there are there are issues on obviously on on you know who who in their right mind is going to take Tango and Dombolo? I mean he's he's gone and stunned the place out in Turkey this season. Tanganga's had is having a great loan at um, Millwall that they love him down there, so we might get a fee for him, you know. But it's um, you know at the Champions League. It's not the place where you can you can bleed in the youth as as as, as we're as, as been asked for here. I think you're more likely to do that in the uh, Europa League. So for so me, do you think, Sean? In... Do you think do you think that and would probably prefer to be in the Europa League for that reason, Sean? Because we're only playing one game a week at the moment, and we seem to be struggling because of the the physical effects of the games. Now mm. I know Wednesday, Saturday, if you try and play that level of football every single time you're in the Champions League. You can't. You physically cannot do it, in my opinion, without the quality to be able to bring players in. I mean, it's kind of, to me. It's kind of six and two threes. It is good to be in the Champions League. To be, you know, particularly with the new form of the Champions League. Because that's another thing we're not factoring in. I'm thinking Champions League group stages. You know, qualifying that way. But it, it, there is no group stages. You, you, you're playing first round games until January next year so you don't you know you, whereas before you had like a break at christmas and 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 then, and then you went back into europe in february no you're still playing those first rounds of games up until january so it's a it's a totally different ball game and I, I, you know I, I, it's very hard to judge without really understanding the way that the new champions league is made up um, it's why I wouldn't be too disappointed if we were in the Europa League. If we were to finish fifth, and because of the coefficient, the fifth place doesn't get doesn't get you the um, the, the, the Champions League place, then you know it, it wouldn't. I mean, I mean, I'm looking at look, I'm looking at the table from last season, and we finished eighth with sixty points. Mm. Um, I didn't realise about the points total, but yeah. You know, sixty points. That that's a, that's a, a, you know. So I mean, uh, this season I'm looking at obviously on an improvement on sixty points. Well, you know, I think we're on we're on target for that. As you've alluded to before, Sam, sixty three goals conceded. Now we're not doing brilliantly on that in terms of what we've achieved so far. With ten games to go, we've conceded forty two. Um, we have scored more than the seventy goals that we got. And remember, seventy goals, thirty of them came from Harry Kane, you know, so it's, we, we, you know, we've had to replace that. 18 wins, six, six draws and 14 defeats. Now, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not looking at this, the, the table as it stands at the moment, but I think we're going to improve on that, surely. So that's good. That's, that's, that's <coughs> progress. And that gives me hope for what, 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 what can come. But I think I'm like we see, but I think we need to make a re we need to get to we need to be getting to semi-finals and finals of domestic cups next year. We need to be um we need to be in that top four, and the top four is going to be very, very competitive. Newcastle will come back. 
Villa have shown that they're a very cute team. There's a lot more teams going for those four places next year. Mm. So I think you know it's 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 tough, but you know. <laughs> I don't know, there's something about Hans, you know, he's not only is he just not only is he just a decent human being, but I think you know, he, he's got he's got views on it. And I, I hope he takes a look at, at Inter Milan because they play a play a similar, not as I say, not the same, but a similar form of play to us, where they have very mobile centre backs. They actually play three at the back, but they you know, they allow their outer uh, centre backs to get forward. Bit like Stones does for Man City. Let's see. Let's see. You know, let's just let's just hope that uh, we've got the funds and that we spend them well. You know, let's hope that we don't finish up like Newcastle spending, you know, spunking a load of money on Tonali. I think to find out that the guy's got a, a charge hanging over him, you know. So yeah, we we, uh, we, we really should be throwing them. Stones. I think glass houses is because some of the things that we've made mistakes on, I'll be like, bloody hell, no. should we have not known that? So, again, we all, every team makes mistakes in the transfer window, and that goes for the best down. So, again, I'm I'm okay with that. It's just we don't want to make repeated mistakes. We should not, in the next, well, in, in, in Andrew's team, be making an end on belly mistake. That should not happen. But saying that, it's not an end on belly mistake, but we've got players like Manuel Solomon in, in our midst as well. What what's what's that about in terms of a signing? Whether he's injured long term, I don't know. But it doesn't. There's something not quite right about that, and I think we could probably talk about that another time because I know we're limited on time today. But there are still elements of our transfer deals that need to be addressed. Are we looking at just bringing in youngsters with potential that we're going to loan off for another year? Because that's what we've done with uh, Udogi. That's what we did with Papasar. That's what we're doing with Bergville now. And there's the other guy, the 17-year-old Slovenian uh, that we've got as a centre-back. He's, again, another player that we bought with potential that's looking very, very, very good. But they're only 17, 18. You know, we're looking to then take that risk that they are going to then transition. Are, are you, do you mean the um, the Croatian? Croatian, sorry, not Slovenian. Croatian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he... he, he Bus club, but he's, he's at, I mean, that we nearly, got, we nearly got caught out on that deal because really? they, uh, they, they Bro, Bergville is, but the other guy, the, what a centre back, Muscovich, yeah, yeah, the yeah. centre back, yeah. Because had you split then stop playing him once he signed for us, yeah, and you know, he obviously wasn't getting developed, so Spurs had to organize a move. He's now playing in. I think the Slovenian league or something. He's playing and he's playing every week and he's getting yeah, raised. That's why I got this. But you know that, that that gives me confidence as well that our recruitment side, you know, realised that they were being we were being uh, duped here. You know that it, it, this, this team weren't were continuing to play this player, so they've moved him. You know, so it, it shows to me that there's a bit of proactive uh, thought going on, and that, you know they're on top of the on top of the case. Um, there are all sorts of, um, you know, I mean, there's so much, there can be so many uh, moving parts come the summer. You know, Parrot has had a reasonable um, loan in, in Holland, and there's talk that PSV or Ajax want to look at him. So do we sell him or do we, or do we, you know, loan him, you know? So there's, there's so much to, to, to go on this summer. Um, but, you know, let's, let's, you know, let's, let's focus on, you know, improving our domestic record. Yeah, we're we're, we're improved as I've as I've demonstrated. We're, we're we're better than last season. I would say we're going to finish well in excess of sixty points. You know, our goals against is still a bit concerning, um, but you know, you you get you get get for me you get a combative six number six, and then you know that that stops happening. Yeah, and and that, that's the right process to have um, it looks like to me there is a bit of a, a strategy in terms of the recruitment it appears that they are looking for these talented youngsters to be able to bring in and develop and maybe not necessarily bring them in straight away but if you do that over the course of a few years obviously you know a, a, a conveyor belt of players coming through each season if you've made the deals the season before etc etc so i know that there's a a bit of a strategy but it's still a risky strategy and in the premier league you have to have experience. You, you do. They say you don't win anything with kids. Well, we've seen that you don't win too many things with kids. 
you can have young squads, but you know, 18 year olds, 19 year olds, 20 year olds, I consider them kids, even though they're men, you don't tend to win a lot with those. And that goes throughout most leagues in, in Europe, not just the Premier League. Um, Lee, Liverpool, Carabao Cup. <laughs> That's just a, that I'm, I'm I'm talking about league wins as opposed to cup wins because you can you you can get cup wins out. But don't get me wrong, if you play your kids throughout, and that's sometimes a bad thing about it, the kids can get the way through to the semi final, and someone just say, "Uh oh, fuck you lot, we're going to put our big boys in the final," which is fair. And it kind of happened to, even though he's not young, Lucas Moore in the Champions League final when Harry Kane, your best players are coming because you think you're going to get better off with them, even though they're not hundred percent fit. And that's another story that we won't talk about because that still boils my blood. But um, going back to the policy, we still have a policy in terms of who we're going to try to sign. Um, but I think we need to have that experience. We need to have what we're missing for me at this moment in time is the, the desire to want to win a domestic trophy and the, the mindset to go along with that. I think it's already been put into our mindset from previous managers. And whether this is coming from the top or just the managers themselves, I don't know. It must be a combination of both. Winning the Carabao Cup or the FA Cup is, yeah, it's all right, but we really want to win the Champions League. We really want to win the Europa and we really want to win the, the Premier League. In reality, every single team next season is going to be doing exactly that. As we said, the likes of Chelsea, yes, we've got to take into consideration financial fair play and how the, the, that's going to take into effect, how people and managers and uh, boards approach buying new players. I get all that. But ultimately, everybody's going to want to improve. Every single team's going to want to improve on what they've done last season, not just us, not just us. So we have to get things right. We also have to believe that this is not... I don't mind next season if we if we show progression that we've taken the domestic cup seriously and we don't win one. I'm I'm, I'm, re, I'm real here. You know, I'd love us to go and win a, a trophy next season, but the reality is there's a lot of other teams that are competing for it and a lot of our teams are in a better situation to compete for those trophies. And we've seen that not a lot of other teams win other than Manchester City, Liverpool, probably throw Arsenal in there, Man United. So we're not a lot of other teams win these other stuff. So it's going to be tough anyway. So, Sid, before we wrap up, um, for next for, for, for this season, obviously, and then is, is there anything to, give give me your thoughts on to what you're you're concerned about, but what's also been positive about where we are at this present time. You know, there's obviously things that you're thinking about for next season and the continuation of this Ange rebuild, but there is positives as well. Well, we were written off, weren't we, in the summer when Conte went, Kane went, we was written off by everyone. Everyone said, that's it, we're done. We're Harry Kane team. That's been proved completely and utterly wrong by Postacoglu. We're more of a team now. I'm not saying we weren't a team under Kane, but... Now, obviously, we're not relying on Harry Kane. We've got people coming in now. We've got everyone playing as a team, as a unit. Goals have been distributed. Someone goes out. We're getting players up front, you know, coming in to do a job. It's still not 100%. But in terms of that, football's better than last season. But then again, Conte, it was Conte, weren't it? And whether <laughs> Conte had a plan that he wanted to put into place and it worked for him. There doesn't see there's the press conferences are chalk and cheese compared to last season and this season. Last season it was continuously blasting the team, blasting the owners, blasting the fans. This season is completely the opposite. This season they the press are enjoying Postacoglu's honest approaches to answers and put down straight away when asked a question that he's like, what are you talking about? So that's good. Um <laughs> Certain players, obviously, we've purchased, have just been top-notch. Poro, Destiny, Van de Ven, Vicario. So in terms of signings, we've actually bought players and it's been fruitful. It's trusting the process. It's a project. I think we've, I personally think we've overachieved under Postacoglu this season. I think... If you ask him as well, I think he he probably wasn't expecting where we are, how we've been doing. Then again, he could turn around and say, well, first 10 games, we were on fire. Had my team not had any injuries and in succession, who knows? Who knows where this could have been? So I think it's positive. 
like you both said, a bit pissed off that we didn't take the cup seriously. But then again, when you're getting teams like the teams that we got drawn against, it was hard. But I think Fulham game, we could have done better. I think Fulham game, he tried an experiment that didn't work. And hindsight now, he's probably agreed. I should have put a better team out. We would have won that game. City game, it was one of them. I mean, I was at the game, Sean was at the game, and we were never going to score in that game because it was just a dull game. They scored the last-minute winner. Again, we could have taken that a little bit more seriously, being at home, putting the pressure on City. We didn't. I'm I'm happy. Obviously, the kids situation, I think we could have embedded Donnelly, Dorrington a little bit more. Can, you know, Phillips, but he's doing well now. He's gone on loan, so that's good. Alfie Devine's doing well as well. So that's potentially, that's four players coming into that squad next season. Whether they do or not, we don't know, but hopefully let's do it. We just move upwards now, isn't it? And the next one is progression next season. The Cups. Try and win a cup. For me, I'm not saying we're going to win the league next season. I'm not going to say we're going to win the Champions League. No, not going to win that, but we're not going to win the league. But if we win the Cup, that's progression again. Remember, it took Arteta how many years? It's taken, you know, Klopp how many years? So, trust the manager, back the manager, and let's buckle in and enjoy the ride. So, on both those counts that you said about Arsenal and Liverpool, both those managers were significantly backed, and more so Arsenal than Liverpool. Liverpool did, but don't, don't get it twisted. Liverpool did spend money, but their, yeah. I guess their net spend, because they had some assets, were able to, you know, rebuild. But Coutinho was a prime example of that, sold him for... Was it 150, 120 million, 100 million? Well, it was 100 million plus, and they were able to rebuild Van, Van Dyke and Allison off the back of that. So that's business, and I, I accept that, but they still spent money. Arsenal got rid of some players and they've spent some big money, and it's been over a period of five years. So we've got to do exactly the same. But have we got the patience? I'm not 100 percent sure. I'm not saying us as 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 fans, but patience is when we've been starved at success, and that goes back to the point that Jews made about oh, it's okay for Liverpool to play kids. Liverpool have got a lot of history in terms of winning stuff, particularly European history. So I think they're they're in their their heritage element to be able to do that. I don't think we've got enough kudos in those aspects to be able to say that, yeah, we can play kids and expect us to win. I could imagine Manchester City could try that. Liverpool could try that. Man United could even to a degree try that because they have got that, you know, backlog of winning. DNA, DNA as you would say, the DNA. And that's fucking important. Anybody that takes that out of the equation... We just have to look at Real Madrid. You just have to look at the likes of Bayern Munich. You just have to look at all those teams which you think, oh, they're having a terrible time, but they somehow, they know because it's in their DNA. We've got DNA, did not attend. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that. Sean, your your, your thoughts on, on basically what Sid said and your kind of thoughts on the pros and cons of this, how we are uh, and where we are. I, I, I feel triggered now. <laughs> I feel a bit triggered by that. Um, by what? DNA. By DNA. Well, we, we don't, do we? We don't attend in the finals. Well, we well let, let, let's get it right also. In that Manchester City game, it was a last minute foul yeah. for a winner, right? So we were that close to getting a replay. We were that close to getting a replay. So, um, and, and we did not play well. Like, well, no, we did not play well. We were not allowed to play well. It was a, it was a very dominant Manchester City performance, and probably any other result would have been a travesty. But you know, we were close to getting a replay. Fulham beat us in a penalty shootout. Although equally, we only scored when one of their players was off getting a replacement boot as well, as I remember. So there's all sorts of. Fine margins, as, as uh, Sam will often say on these on these podcasts. Um, but yeah, it's I, I, I can't, you know, you can't get over. I mean, Juice Nuts has made that brilliant comment. I think Ferguson was in his fifth season. I could be wrong. I think it was his fifth season before he won that FA Cup, for which he's responsible. Which for which he's 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 eternally grateful to a man who's managing in the lower divisions, Mark Robbins. Right, who scored a late equaliser against Oxford United? I think you remember. But you cannot, you know, improving your DNA. Liverpool have a winning mentality. Mm. It goes from the boardroom to the fan base. 
they believe that they can win things. They, they absolutely believe that they can win things. And that winning mentality, you only get through touching the silverware. I've been and in that went a lot. Yeah. yeah. If, if Spurs were to win the Carabao or the FA Cup next season, the effects on those young players that we've got, they will grow an extra two inches. They will they will believe that much more. It's, it's, and it's, and you know, we need to get that winning mentality. You know, look look look. I mean, United won that cup, and then look what happened when what they went on to dominate almost a decade. Yeah. You know? So let, let let's let's let us let us let us you know, let's look forward. Hopefully, I think you know the signs are good, and. Um, we we need to, you know we need we need a bit of unity, we need a bit of unity as uh, as uh, Jesus has indicated there, we need a bit of unity on on and off the field, and have a bit of belief in this manager, and patience, He's, yeah, and patience, a bit of patience, yeah. That's because that, that is the, that that is the that is the perennial undoing of Tottenham of Our course. fans, of our course. fans are the most impatient impatient people and people say oh well how can we be impatient we haven't won the trophy for 20 years but you are responsible because you've not been prepared to back players how how often i mean you know i think about the players that come particularly the players we produce our own the fans of the club you know we we instigate them if they misplay the pass you don't get that liverpool those young boys go out there and they have the backing of their fans. And if they make a mistake, it's come on, come on, just, you know, get behind them. I wish I could say that that's the same at Tottenham. It's not, yeah. It's just um, not. I have a couple of things I want to do before you just wrap up, just on my point. Yeah, I agree with that. About the, you have to give them patience. The, the only other thing I would say about that is probably going back to 1986. If you look at the average, average length of time a manager is in position as opposed to the average length of managers in position now it's probably completely different you don't get you don't get time even even a team that's not expected to win they don't get time in the premier league at least that's down to the money side of things so i understand all of that but we're not i do not believe i remember that, that there's last days of um before red Knight came in who was the manager before red Knight came in for us uh who won he won the trophy for us oh oh god i should know his name He's a J. Oh, Jesus. Ramos. Ramos. No. Ramos. Ramos. Juan de Ramos. Juan de Ramos. And we was in big trouble towards that. Um, we in our first 10 games or so of the season. We was in relegation trouble. Red Knapp came in. And, and Two points, safe. eight games. Yeah, it was it was awful. I remember that. I was like, oh, my God. I can't go out. Arsenal fans are going to kill me. Um, literally. But anyway, what my point was, you don't get as much time as you did back then as you do now. Absolutely. As, as you did back then, you don't get as much time now. So you're under pressure as a manager to have to, to perform regardless of where you are and what you've achieved. Um, Sid's had to go because he, he's, 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 he's um, mm. uh, Ramadan. Um, but my, my, la my last point on that being, yeah, the DNA thing is definitely real. And the only thing I was going to address about the, the Manchester City thing that Jews had said is that, yes, they might not have the DNA, but what they have got, and Chelsea including this, is they had a lot of money. That can kind of... PSG, they don't have the DNA, but they've got a lot of money. Now, Manchester City have taken their time before they've got to win the Champions League. I would imagine if you have the money and you're able to spend it, which is debatable now, I think you can bypass it. Blackburn have done that in the league before. There are some outliers who have talked about best in the etc. But generally, there's two, one of two things in terms of winning stuff. The DNA, the heritage, all the rest of that that builds into your, your club ethos. And you know that when you get into a final, as Liverpool did when they played us in the 2019 final, it was almost like, well, we've been here and we've done this five times before. You know, we know what we're going to do. We're, oh, bloody hell, bright lights, big city. We've never done that before. So we're not going to be able to rely on, fall back on that experience. Liverpool as a club did. Mm -hmm. Go and feel like if, 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 if we'd won that, if we'd won that trophy, like, oh, for no, sure. the sure. effect it's it would have had on the team, you know. The, the the effect it would have had on, on, on managers, Poch would have been backed. I think if Poch had decided to stay and not walk away, there would have been a different Pochettino because you can't then be winning a Champions League and then say, I want some players, and then them turn around saying, Ah, now we're not spending too much money now because we just won the Champions League, we're gonna keep it back. That doesn't happen. It never happens. So a lot of things could have been different 
back then had that been the case. Mm-hmm. But even going back to the point where we had Jose Mourinho for the final win, it was 2019, sorry, 2020, was it? 2020, 221. 221, that was it, 221. Um, there was opportunities there and there has been opportunities prior to that as well. And there probably will be opportunities post what we're talking now. I just hope to see that that is going to be the case for next season. We take them cup competitions seriously in terms of the domestic. We also utilise the European competition, if it's not the Champions League, to be able to improve some of these other players that we need to take along the way. Because, as I said, the way that we play our football relies on all players almost having equal ability and quality such that you can bring something in. Our drop-off between Van der Ven, not to say Dragerson's a big drop-off, but he hasn't obviously played enough, has to be almost seamless. If he goes out, you bring someone else in that's almost seamless. You know, there are some positions which might not be the case. Goalkeeper being one of them, you're not going to have necessarily two high-class goalkeepers on your bench because... Doesn't work like that with goalkeepers. You don't often rotate, but certainly every other play, if you're playing a lot of competitions, you would do. So that's where I think the summer window will tell me: Are we on those steps to do that? If I see, and I've, I've made that clear, I don't want to see Timo Werner sign. No matter what he's done, no matter what he does between now and the end of this season, I don't want to see Timo. But that's me personally, and the reason I tell you that is because I know that would be a mistake. That would be a mistake. I looked at his what he's what he's on, 165k. I've looked at what he's done previously. He's an impact player. I don't want to spend 165,000 pounds per week for someone to just be sitting on the bench because we've already got Johnsons, we've got projects in that. He's not a project in my opinion, but that's just me. So I want to see real thought going into who and what we get. We need more aggression in midfield. We certainly need more pace at the centre back area, so we need to address that. And I also think that we need some wide players. There's a lot we need. A lot we need. <laughs> so, um, one, <laughs> Wendy Ramos is probably more to say the case. And Jesus is on fire today. No tomato sauce around. <laughs> oh, I remember that, yeah. Or onwards and upwards. Um, and this one here. As you get older in life, you often get wiser. Sometimes when you wish for something, the universe doesn't provide. Meaning, chill out on the cups. They will come if you don't wish for them. I'm of the opposite opinion. What you focus on, you get. That's how I look at it. I, I'm not this, oh, just wait around. Now, if you've got that focus and that's what you want to achieve, you can achieve it. Um, achieve it. Think it. Believe it. Achieve it. Yeah. I agree. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very, very, very zen. <laughs> very zen. <laughs> I think that. <laughs> yeah. Namaste, Flam. Namaste. Yeah. Uh, definitely, definitely. You see some incense burning on that le- next time. We definitely have something going on. Uh, <laughs> but that's just it's good for um, flexibility, anyway. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, in all seriousness, though. We, we've got a lot of things that we need to address. The, the good thing is, I think we're on the right path. I also think, and this is probably some people might have a different view, I think Danny Levy has fallen on his feet with this manager. He's a manager that's going to talk the truth, but he's not going to embarrass him. He's going to say, he's not going to blame everything else. He's going to say, I take responsibility. And I think from a Danny Levy perspective, that's brilliant because he hasn't got a content which he's going to start speaking at. Now, whether that changes down the line, if things don't quite go according to plan, I expect it to. But in general, if we have those incremental increases and improvements, there is no reason why Poster Cogley would turn around and come out in a press conference and say, oh, fucking you know, hell, all these players are shit. I basically don't know what's going on with this club. I don't expect to see that because he knew what he was buying into. So the f- things are, are positive. Let's just see how positive over the next few transfer windows. And I think you're right, Sean. I would rather... It's tough. I hate to say I'd rather be in a Europa League than the Champions League. No, I'd rather be in the Champions League because the Champions League is the best competition. Mm. But do I think we'd win the Champions League next season? Not with own players. Not being able to... not If I've seen what I've seen now and the quality of the Champions League teams, even with a different format, I think it would be very, very, very tough. I mean, yeah, I think we aim for the Champions League, but if we don't get it, let's not let's not beat ourselves up about it. Let's not beat the manager up about it, and exactly. let's just focus on what we can achieve uh, exactly. for next season. 
Because what happens, and we've seen it, if you do achieve the Champions League, we kind of almost forget that we've we've done there and we're not supposed to win it. We always get this, right, we're now playing Inter Milan this week, we're playing Barcelona, and then you get the this, oh my God, we got, we got whipped. But then if you think about prior to that, what is the Champions League for for us? It, it's an achievement. Getting into the Champions League would be an achievement for Posta Coglu based on the fact that we were eighth last season. That's how we should look at it. Not as a case of, oh, we're getting in the Champions League because next season we're in the final. Possibly not the way to look at it, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, any final thoughts? Any more final thoughts, Sean, before we go? Anything you want to say? No, I mean, I, I, I'm in a... I'm in a uh, this has been quite therapeutic you know, after the Fulham. <laughs> um, and it's just, you know, focus. I think as as, as the players do, and as, as Anne says, tells us, game on game. We worry about the next game, which is against Luton. We're at home. Our home record is generally very good, apart from when we were, you know, our, our squad was depleted um, or when um, we, we underperformed. So let's perform to our best and, we, and we'll, we'll take the three points. Then, you know, it's the, the, then the games become a steadily more difficult. But, you know, let's, let's, you know, although we've lost to teams that we should beat, and, I, you know, we, we need to get out of that mindset a bit that we should beat. There is no gimmies in the, in the Premier League. Our record against the top three is very good this season. That's we've, gone said, the, we've gone to the Etihad yeah. and we drew. <laughs> we drew. We drew at the Emirates. We beat mm-hmm. Liverpool at home. All right, we we had we had more than a, a stroke of help to beat Liverpool, but it's their only league to uh, their only league defeat. So, you know, we just need to focus on hoovering up the points against the likes of Luton, Nottingham Forest. West Ham, dare I say it, or you know the teams that we're going to play towards the end of the season. Yeah, we, well. we can't have we can't have back to back defeats against. And no disrespect to these teams, but we can't have back to back defeats against teams like Fulham and then Luton at home if we are looking to achieve what we're looking to achieve at the end of the season. I can understand that maybe at the early parts of the season when we had some of them results and we had a lot of players out, etc. But you know, at this moment in time, we can't have that. So you know, fabulous, Sean. I think that is it. Thank you to all them viewers that have been watching us. Uh, Juice Nuts, thank you for all your comments. It's been brilliant. JJ is in the house as well. Really appreciate that. All the other people, make sure if you're watching, smash that like button, subscribe, share it around. As Sean always said, I always forget to do, make sure you share this content. It's on X, it's on Instagram. You'll see us on YouTube, obviously, and uh, Twitch. I think there's a load of other places you can catch us. Uh, what's this? Oh, I saw as comments already gone. Sorry, I thought I'd have got a new comment in there. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Next time, you may see some incense burning, you may have some of that, you know, that music <laughs> playing in the background. Y- yoga see, with Sam, because <laughs> yes, I do agree. I sometimes think, and I'll say it before I go think it, believe it, achieve it. There you go, JJ. I'm on that one. <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant. Ah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm too good for this. No, I'm only joking, people. I'm not too good for this. I'm very, very, I'm grateful for all things in life. I'm grateful for all things in life. That's how you've got to be. Um, I think that's it, Sean. Yeah. We're out. We'll probably be around some point next week. Maybe we'll do another one of these. If not, we'll obviously do the preview show for the looting game. Um, but we have got, obviously, England to, to watch over the next week or so. So enjoy that. Enjoy life. Um, come on, you Spurs. Oh,